Welcome to the Shintaido of America podcast. Shintaido is an amazing form of health exercise and body movement practice inspired by martial arts, a non-combative training system for mind and body invented by Japanese martial artists in the 1960s. Shintaido can be a way to open up to a deeper connection with ourselves, with our community, and with nature. In season one of the podcast, I'll be reading from the book Shintaido, The Body is a Message of the Universe, by the founder of Shintaido, Hiroyuki Aoki. But before I jump into that, I have a favor to ask. Shintaido of America produces this podcast and other educational materials on a shoestring budget. There are many things you can do to help, and the most important one is that if you like this podcast, tell people about us. Share it on your social media, and give us a good rating on whatever platform you're using to listen to this. You can find links to this podcast, sign up for our free email newsletter, and find many other resources at our website, www.shintaido.org. That's www.s-h-i-n-t-a-i-d-o.org. Hi, welcome to Episode 6 of the Shintaido of America podcast. I'm Shintaido instructor David Franklin. Zen. The first image that may come to mind is a monk sitting in quiet meditation in a temple. Hariyaga Sekyun was a 17th century samurai who put Zen into practice in his sword technique. This, and Sekyun's concept of Nyuwa Muboshi, or soft, rhythmless movement, completely transcended the worldview of traditional martial arts as it was understood in Sekyun's day. As I mentioned, our podcast today is like an audio book. I'll be reading from the book Shintaido, The Body is a Message of the Universe, by the founder of Shintaido, Hiroyuki Aoki. Okay, ready? Here we go. Chapter 2, Section 4, The Sword Technique of Hariyaga Sekiyun, Expanding Time, Space, and Energy. Although the theory of Sekiyun's sword movement is not well known in Japan today, it was influenced by the Zen master Kohaku and is, for this reason, of particular interest to us. As human beings, Sekiyun said, we should not imitate animals either in thought or action. In sword movement, there is no mystery or miracle, but only reality which is controlled by the rational power of the human mind. Most of the sword masters who habitually spoke of or alluded to magic or occult techniques were not genuine, or, as Sekyun would say, were of inferior understanding. He considered those who taught only one kind of response to a specific attack or of attacking in only one way according to a particular situation practitioners of an unnatural or subhuman concept of fighting. His school had only one idea, called Ainuke, which means spearing through each other. Though Sekyun and his disciple Ichiun are no longer alive to clarify this expression for us, we can see that it is far different from and superior to the meaning of Ayuchi, which means mutual hitting or killing. Sekyun believed that our highest goal is to enter the holiest space, which is singular and called Yuichi Muni, only one, never two. Although anyone can reach this space, it is impossible to attain by ordinary means. The person who reaches this level must be completely attuned to the other who has reached the same level. When these two persons meet, the instant, called Ainuke, which precedes the start of the fight, is born. Sekyun called the highest level which could be attained Se, or holiness. This realm is Yuitsimuni just as the sun is one and the moon is one. It is the highest and the holiest. The traditional goal of oneness in Zen is called Mu, but when Sekyun spoke of the highest level, he always used the term Se, which led us to believe he must have reached a oneness that is only attainable through grace. In other words, if we wish to attain the highest level, we must continually seek to inhabit the realm of God. In the words of Jesus Christ, On that day you will understand that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. 
John 14.20 Although this realm is open to all, it is too sacred for us to enter by our own ability. This realm is governed by the grace of God. Or, to put it colloquially, anyone can come in, but who can come in? If a person holds communion with another human being and at the same time unites himself with God, how can we describe it? It is, we must say, complete oneness of being. I believe that whatever destroys this kind of oneness or hinders us from reaching it is called sin in Christianity. What remains when our skin is peeled off, when our flesh, bones, blood, organs, and even our life is taken away and all our body burned to ashes may be nothing more than our small space in this big cosmos. This space has its own reality and can be explained only through the word being, E-H-I-H-E-H -H -E -H in Hebrew. When Moses asked God, what is your name? God answered, my name is being. I am who I am. With our hands and minds, we must grope our way towards this realm. Our search will allow us to become one with those who have clearly experienced this realm, being, Jesus Christ, and God. This is called kiichi, going back to oneness. Sekiyun taught that the way of the sword is similar to the way of using chopsticks when we eat. When we use chopsticks, we use them naturally, without thinking, as extensions of our hands. He said, when we move, we must move like a baby. How different this is from the usual advice of cutting with all our power, tightening our arm muscles and forcing our grip. He also said that we should not try to concentrate a special power in the lower part of our hara, or abdomen, but rather, as the body leads, we should follow naturally. He said that there is no winner or loser, no stronger or weaker person. He claimed that there is no too fast and no too slow. There is no special timing or special moment. Simply move as your body leads you. He also maintained that there is no special ma or space between you and your partner, nor is there any particular timing. If the distance between you and your partner is too great, simply walk forward and when you reach the proper distance, cut down. If the distance is correct from the start, then cut down naturally. He also cautioned against imposing a special philosophy on our technique. All these ideas seem incredible today. In today's modern world, there may be philosophies which are greater than his, but the point we have to remember is that Sekiyun expressed these ideas 350 years ago, and he brought them to life through his sword technique. The technique through which he expressed his philosophy is called nyuamuboshi, soft, peaceful, rhythmless movement. From this term, we can imagine how soft, ephemeral, and peaceful this technique must have been. Without specifically relying on power or timing, his movement went beyond the usual sense of ma. The use of energy, time, and space are the three most important principles in the martial arts but in his theory and thought, they're infinitely expanded and transposed. I believe he created a world of far different dimensions from the one we are familiar with. Consequently, the conventional martial arts and martial arts philosophy are not sufficient to explain his ideas. In his search for the Tao, I believe that Sekyun, after having done all that was humanly possibly, finally came face to face with God the Creator. In that moment, he reflected God's glory and was purified by the Holy Spirit which filled his being. Through this grace, he must have reached a pinnacle far beyond the understanding or scope of ordinary mental processes. Sekiyun criticized and repudiated the great swordsmen, his predecessors who placed great emphasis on how to fight and win including his own teacher. With their ornate philosophies and techniques, which were concerned simply with fighting and winning, he claimed their practice was only animal fighting. He insisted that the highest secret technique should be nyuamuboshi and that our spiritual aim should be the realm of holiness. He seems to say that the most important thing in swordsmanship is not how to defeat an enemy or survive battle, but how to enter a holy space. 
when two holy men meet and cross swords, they put aside worldly turbulence and return to nature where they regain the original condition of an infant. This instant he called Ainuke. When Sekyun came to these realizations, the martial arts of Japan reached their highest level. When we describe sword technique, we usually use two expressions, sansujinto, killing with the sword, and katsujinken, giving life with the sword. But Sekyun arrived at this theory through actual combat in which either swordsman might lose his life. Consequently, he saw that we should not superficially equate ainuke and katsujinken. If we accept his conclusion, then these original terms become meaningless or irrelevant in relationship to his ideas. Although there are few records concerning Sekyun's life or teaching, the light of his achievements shines brightly in the history of the Japanese martial arts. Other swordsmen have become well known through legendary accounts, but I can assure you that fictional heroes are not the same as real martial artists. We should remember that it was through a kind of historical grace, the gift of preceding generations, that Sekyun was able to attain his level. Every age has produced its own martial artist in such a way that each new swordsman succeeded his precursor and was in turn succeeded by another. Through this process, at least one individual capable of entering the realm of, say, holiness, might have appeared in each age. Sekyun was a revolutionary master, but his times helped him to open his eyes. After Sekyun, there were many martial arts masters. Some used the same expressions as Sekyun, and often they were more elaborate or exotic, but I do not believe there is a martial arts philosophy equal to his in its development until Yamaoka Teshu, a master of unparalleled stature and importance for the Meiji period. As a young man, Teshu devoted himself to the twofold discipline of Zen and sword technique, cultivating that sublime spirit and sensibility which had grown out of the unique combination of samurai stoicism and Zen aestheticism during the Shogun period. He became a master at the spiritual level where Zen and Ken, or sword, are one. Teshu's accomplishments won him a position as an advisor to the shogun during the final years of the Tokugawa government. As a result of his unique spiritual understanding among warring factions, he survived the political and cultural upheavals of the Meiji Restoration, unlike most of his samurai contemporaries, and became the personal tutor of the Meiji Emperor. In his person and in his teaching, the traditional value of the samurai ethos and the spirit of Budo were recognized and preserved during a period in which it might otherwise have been lost. Our forerunners in the martial arts were oriented toward inner research and individual liberation, but we must keep in mind that our country at that time was isolated and quite undemocratic. Modern Japan, on the other hand, is open to the outside world and, while more democratic, is less conducive to this kind of research. It is important for contemporary martial artists to remember that even though the present time is far different than the classic age of martial arts, it offers many new directions and adversaries which must be confronted. We have the responsibility and obligation to express our opinions and beliefs to our nation and our leaders, especially in regard to social and environmental problems. Our movement, therefore, must be different from what has come before. You've been listening to Episode 6 of the Shintaido of America podcast, a reading from the book Shintaido, The Body is a Message of the Universe by Hiroyuki Aoki. If you enjoyed today's podcast, the most important thing you can do to help is to tell people about us. Share the podcast on your social media and give us a good rating on whatever platform you're using to listen to this. Shintaido of America is a member-supported nonprofit organization, and there are many ways to support our truly micro-budget production of educational materials. And I really mean that. We produce a huge amount of content on volunteer power, but some things just require a few bucks in the bank. So make a donation or become a member of Shintaido of America. You can do that, sign up for our free email newsletter, 
and also find all kinds of free educational resources at our website, www.shintaido.org. That's whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. Dot Sierra Hotel India November, Tango Alpha India Delta Oscar. Dot Oscar Romeo Golf. You can also find us on Instagram, on Facebook, and on YouTube by searching for Shintaido of America. And our email address is podcast at shintaido.org. Our episode today was recorded and edited by me, David Franklin, with support from Sarah Baker, Connie Borden, Teresa Soldatova, Jim Sterling, the Joe Zawilski Memorial Fund, and of course, the members of Shintaido of America. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Shintaido of America podcast. I'm Shintaido instructor David Franklin. Contents of this podcast, copyright Shintaido of America 2022. Shintaido, opening to life. (laughs) 